Hi guys and welcome to Paint with Mark. Today I thought we'd paint a beautiful picture called Morning Walk and I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this lovely picture. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some black gesso like an acrylic paint just to put on some black around here um, sort of tree shapes that will give us a lovely dark so it will show light. So I'm going to use some black gesso and I'm going to use it on a just a little tiny throwaway plastic bowl um, and it, this dries really quick so I need to use it really quick and I'm just going to use a foam applicator um, that you get from a little uh, craft shop um, these are about 10 for a pound or 10 for a dollar I'm just going to go into the into the black and I'm just ri literally just going to paste it all on so I'm not worried too much whether it's thin or thick um, I'm just sort of going to tap it in roughly shape it sort of like bushy trees sh sort of shapes um, but I'm not too fast the way it goes and this does draw really quick so I'm just going to try and get it on as I talk to you Again, I'm just sort of doing sort of ind indication of sort of tree sort of shapes and things are, are going on here. And when you do this, you can choose how many of these or how dark you want it. So you see I've, I've got darker bits, um, some, some lighter bits, not too fast. Obviously we're going to put colour on top. But this creates a lovely dark background for us to work from. And uh, the lights will show really well against it. It saves a lot of paint and a lot of time. So basically that sort of gives us a basic shape that I want, indications of our trees or limbs or coming over and all I'm going to do now is I'm literally going to fill in the bottom I mean you could do this with a, a roller it doesn't matter really just to get it in a case so I'm going to put a bit more on and I'm going to use a, a bigger just a bigger one just to get it done a bit quicker I'm literally just going to go over this and this dries really quick now you, you, to speed things up you could use a hairdryer over the top of it just to uh, dry it out quicker but it, it really does dry in a few minutes so I don't worry too much a bit more so especially a little bit at a time just putting it on there There we go, so basically now I've put the, all the black gesso on and I'm going to let this dry completely, it must be dry very, very thoroughly and completely. Once it's dry, I'm then going to apply some liquid clear. Now when you apply the liquid clear, 
this has to go on very very sparingly um, but I'm going to show you how to do that in the next step so we're just going to let this dry and, and then we're going to go on to put the liquid clear and then we'll start painting the picture guys right now the black gesso has completely dried so I'm going to go into just with a little one inch brush into my liquid clear and again as I said to you you do not use hardly any of this liquid clear otherwise the whole picture is just going to run so I'm just going to apply this into the black areas so I'm just going to dip the brush into the liquid clear and literally I'm just going to scrub it into the canvas just going over on top of the black areas you see I'm just literally scrubbing it into the surface because you don't use very much at all so literally just touching it just scrubbing it into the surface Force it into the grain. Just so it's got just a shiny, little bit of shine to the surface. Mine's dried out a little bit, usually it's very thin, so just be very careful with the amount that you're using. And all this does really is just allow us to put the colour on top to go on easily because sometimes if this background is very dry it's hard to get a thick colour to actually blend onto the surface. So when I've laid that all on, I look down the side and just to make sure that the whole surface is shiny. And then I will get a bit of paper toweling, kitchen roll, and I'll wipe over the whole area as I said to you I just don't want too much on there and then I'll make sure that I'll clean my brush thoroughly now I'm not going to put it in thinners yet because in this area here I'm going to apply some liquid white so I'm just going to dip into some liquid white, a tiny bit here, and I'm just going to crisscross in the white areas. Some liquid white. Some of it might go over the black. Doesn't matter. Just want to make sure that the white's completely covered. Again, I don't want too much on there, so I'll go. I'll get a kitchen towel uh, and I'll just wipe over. Okay, I'm going to use my brush and clean that. Now, I've mixed up some alizarin crimson and phthalo blue to make a sort of a, a purpley colour. 
So I'm just going to go into this little bit, this purple now. Um, I'm, just, I'm going to use the one inch brush just because I've got a one inch brush out. Um, and you can see it's a sort of purpley colour I've made. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and put this purple over the top of the black. Now you probably won't see it, um, but it is going to be on there. So I'm just going to literally crisscross over the black. Just doing crisscross strokes. Backwards and forwards. Again, you might see it, you might not see, see it in there. Backwards and forwards. Then I'm going to wash the brush in odorless thinners. Clean. So let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into some yellow ochre. Put a little bit of yellow ochre out. And a bit of white. So titanium white, yellow ochre up here to make a nice light colour. Um, and then I'm going to go into this area here. Now I'm going to go into some phthalo blue. Again, I only use a very small amount of this phthalo blue. It's very, very powerful. So I'm just going to do this at the top areas. Quick cross strokes. down and be careful not to go down too far into the yellow otherwise it will turn a green so I've just literally just got the colour on there first I'm going to wipe my brush clean the brush get all the excess paint off the brush And then I'm just going to blend a bit more over the top. Blend it back a bit more. Wipe it again, the tissue. And very lightly blend over where the yellow meets the blue. But we're going to put some purple on top of that anyway. So, that's the first step. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go into this purple colour. Um, I'm going to add a little bit, of, a bit more of the blue into this purple colour. And I'm just going to tap downwards with the bristles. So tapping down with the bristles. And I'm going to go into this area here, I'm just going to 
tap. Just thinking about shapes. these darks that you've put in previously I'm just gonna tap over Get these bushy shapes Put some more colour down Really open up those bristles. Apply light pressure. And because we've got the dark in the background, it actually gives it the depth for you. time sideways on and I'm just going to put a bit of this colour using the side of the brush I'm just going to tap the indication of some good sort of branches that's going on probably do the same on the other side. Just pull the brush down, turn over, and again we just just tap. Just sort of tapping it all in to the middle bit really. Just to give indication, just like a bit of foliage, bits and pieces going on there. Okay, so we've got these bits here, so we've got a nice sort of contrasting colours going on with the blues and the lights, like colours. So we're going to get a liner brush. And I'm going to go into some thinner. And I'm going to use the same colour, the purple. Might put a bit of black in there as well. You want it like consistency of ink, so it's really running. We'll get a bit more so it's very, very runny watery. So so I've got this so it's nearly running off my palette. It's like consistency of ink. I'm twisting it round, and I'm going to do an indication of some some limbs and things going on here, bits and pieces, little bits and pieces that are going on here. A few little bits and pieces here and there. Keep. Adding more ink and colour. Do one there. Okay. You can. Some people prefer to do um, the actual limbs from the top working down. Um, you can flick going up. It doesn't really matter. Whichever you find easier to do. Just try and remember that it's usually thinner at the ends. 
bits and pieces here. Just creates the incident. I, mean, I, I love the, the black backgrounds that we put in because it instantly creates a, a forest already and we've done hardly anything. That's what I really like about it. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm just to clean the brush off. And I'll get my two inch brush again and I'll just tap over some of these branches that I've done uh, because I don't want them to stand out too much if you just tap lightly over a few of them also I'm going to get a dry round brush for a moment and I'm just going to tap over make sure it's clean I'm just going to tap over the edges because I want to thin this out a bit more and make it more subtle. So basically without no colour at all, I just tap in the edges of these bushes and trees that I've done. And the more you tap, the more it blends in with the colour beneath. And the more subtle so we want it very, very subtle. Just keep tapping very lightly the edges. We just want it very, very subtle. Okay. Right. I'm now going to put some bushes and bushy shapes around this area. I'm going to actually use the round brush. So I'm going to go into some sap green, bring some sap green down to my palette here. I'm going to use a little bit of um, cadmium yellow. Uh, I'm going to put some of this purple colour in there as well uh, because I don't want it too bright. Um, I want it very subtle. Uh, you can always lighten it up if you want, you know, in your picture. But I think we'll go quite a dark green to start with. So I'm just going to tap into my colour and I'm going to start around here just sort of building shape. Just sort of following the land, you may not or may not be able to see that on the video, but I'm just sort of creating in layers. But again, I want this dark, so basically, I'm just going up, and then I'm going to create another layer in front. But don't take out all the darks in between the layers. So basically, I've done a layer and I've left the dark in between. And I've done another layer there. I might just line it up in a minute so you can see a bit more. I'll line it just a touch more for you. You might get the idea. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and do the same. So I'm just going to just tap down there. So I've done this a bit more lighter for you so you can see hopefully more on the video. Bushes and here, and I'm going to create some bushes here. A lot of the land coming up here. And pop the bum down there. These are lovely, these round brushes, they create these bush shapes so, so easily. So easily. So I'll do a little bit more here, another layer. Down to about there. And while I've got this going, 
a little bit more. Um, I'm just going to do a few more. A bit more green. Just to go this side. Just to create an indication um, of some colour, some green in here. Okay. I think that will do that. Right. I cleaned the brush. Okay, now we've got to think about the lay of the land. So I'm going to put a lay of the land here and I'm going to use the two inch brush. Now it's got some purple on it already which doesn't matter uh, because we're going to go into the cadmium yellow which will instantly turn that into a greeny colour. So I'm just going to pull this down, tap pull it one way, turn it around, pull it the other way and just sort of push up, put the ridge push up and then holding the brush slightly downwards with the handle downwards I'm just going to lightly touch in the lay of the land hopefully you can see that in the picture Side. Now the more you tap this, the more you tap this, the darker it will become because it's picking up the purple colour underneath. So we're just tapping over. the lay of the land. So this side, just tap in down here. And again, we can go over this more and more in a moment. But that basically gives us the lay of the hand. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure that this area here is a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to go into the yellow, pull it once on the other one, I'm just going to push up this bit, so I just want this bit here to be light areas, just there each side, because with well, the lights catching here first, I want this to be light and then gradually fade out. Okay, so from here, I think what we do, we're putting a path coming across this area here. Again, it's your world, you can do what you want, but I think it would look nice with a path in there. So I'm going to use some Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, and a little bit of white. So I'm going to mix all those up. It's all marbly flavour. <laughs> and then I'll wipe the knife. And then I'm just going to pull across to get some paint on there. And I'm just going to start at the top here. Up here. Applying hardly any pressure as 
So I start from here. Try to point off any pressure. Bring a path down here. And we're going to bring it right across. Okay. Now, I want that to blend in even more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my brush. In fact, I use probably a one inch brush. It doesn't really matter. Um, actually, I've got a, a little soft brush here we can use. A little soft brush. And very lightly, I'm just going to run over this. Very, very lightly. Just want to push it back a bit more. It. And then I'm going to use my, my two inch brush again with the green on it, and I'm just going to tap into and down onto some of this path to set this path right in. So I'm just tapping. Again, I'm just doing basically more of what we did before, um, but I'm actually coming right into and onto the path this time, so that the path is blending in. And I'll do the same this side, I just tap right onto the path. So it looks like it's set back a bit more, like here, I'll push it back a bit more, so it's actually come right over the path and this side will do the same here a bit into there I think again all I'm doing is I'm just tapping in again it's just uh, forcing it all back in So the path is all set here, so you can see it's all across there. Clean my brush. Okay, bravery test. I think today we use fan brush and we'll use Van Dyke Brown. So I'll put some Van Dyke Brown on one side. We'll use Dark Sienna and we're going to put some black in there. So it's very dark and use a brush one side and the other side, really loading it up. Really loading this up. One side, put it down, the other side, put it down. So, bravery test. So, I think we're gonna have a few trees. So, start from the top, push. I'm just gonna push a tree down into here. So, I'll start there, touch, pull, and down. And again, you, you might not be able to see that very well um, because obviously it's dark, but I do want it dark, that's the idea of it. So I'm going to go into some more. And I'm going to have another one over this side here. So I'll put one down here. to there and then I'm going to pull a big one down let's have one down here somewhere I think so I'm going to put one down to there about there again 
you can load up and go back over if it doesn't show too well just go over it a little bit more just put a few bit of legs on it And I'm going to have another one here, I think. One there. Mm, let's have one there. I think we have one here. So basically what I'm doing, I'm sort of placing them in front of the other. So that one's set this side, and this one's a bit lower. Um, and this one on this side, I'm going to have probably set a bit lower here, this side here. So I'm going off to pull it from there down to about there. And pull that one down to about there. And you can you can have as many as you want in your picture, obviously. Yeah. And the good thing is, if you've got wobbly hands or you're a bit shaky, you've got an advantage because not all trees are all perfectly straight. So I might do another one in here, just to break it a bit more, just put another one in there. That's about there I think. Just to create a bit more interest. Okay, when you're doing yours, you can do as many or as little. As you want to. So I think I'd do, I might make this a little bit wider. This one here being as it's closer to us, I just uh, make it a bit thicker as it's the bigger one. Just like that, widen a bit more paint. So it's the thickness done. So basically, now what I'm going to do is now we use this, I'm going to highlight this trees by using the knife. And I'm going to use the same colour as what we use for the path. So I'm going to use dark sienna, Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of white. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Van Ock Brown, Dark Sienna and a little bit of white. And I'm going to spread it down on the palette. I'm going to cut across. And if you've ever done mountains and highlighting uh, snow on mountains, it's exactly the same procedure. So very light strokes. The light source is here, which means it will be this side of these. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the top and very lightly let it take what colour it wants from me. I'm not applying any pressure at all, it's just taking the colour it wants. Now you may not be able to see it, so what I might do, I might lighten it up a little bit more just for your benefit, just so you can see it in the video. Uh, but on here it does, it looks more natural, but I will lighten this up for you. So basically, hardly any pressure at all, just touch, pull, and just let it take the paint that it needs from you. Right. So it goes on nice and thick, really thick. Put a bit more white in there so you can see a bit more. This one, just let it take the colour. This one, just let it take the colour on that side, on that side. Obviously, the lights on this side, so you need to turn the knife up the, the other way so the handle's at the top. 
because you need to get the light on this side down onto this side and again with this one same thing really take the colour down here like this now it's nice to put a little bit of blue as reflection light on the other side so what I want to do, I'm just literally going to add some phthalo blue just on its own and on, on the reverse side, on the back side, I'm just here and there I'm just going to touch so it just takes a bit of the blue on this back side of it blue she uses reflective light so again on this side don't forget you've got to put it on this side Just here and there. Okay, so you got bits of blue in. I'm going to wipe the knife and I'm going to go into some Van Dyke Brown, just Van Dyke Brown. I'm just going to do a little bit on the knife and I'm just going to touch here and there, literally just touching a knife onto this here and there and it creates the most beautiful effect, realistic effect because you're layering paint on and you've got darks in there, lights and darks and it really does make these trees come to life when somebody comes up to your picture it really does create three dimensional depth put a bit dark here so just touching here and there with the dark and the Van Dyke Brown it will, po it will take what he needs Okay, so with that done, what we'll do now, we'll just have a look at the bottom of these trees just to make sure that they're blending in nicely with the surroundings. Put down there. And what I would do, we'll get my two inch brush. And at the bottoms, at the bases, get a little bit more of the paint and just touch the bases here just to make sure they're not just floating. Okay. And this one in here, I'm just going to use a one inch brush and this one up there okay right I'm going to go back to my liner brush now and I'm going to thin this paint out um, and I've got the dark sienna Van Dyke brown and some black and I'm actually going to add thinners to this and do some branches. So I'm just mixing these together. Plenty of thinner so it's ink light. I'm twisting as I'm pulling, I'm twisting the brush. 
on spinning. So we're going to have a few limbs and bits and pieces on these. So I'm just going to go up and do a few. Yeah, they don't always go the same way. A few of these actually, you know, could go down, facing down. Um, so, something to bear in mind when you're doing these uh, limbs. I get thinner. If it doesn't work, I if if it doesn't if it won't show. It may be because it's not thin enough, the paint's not thin enough, that's usually the way. So you just need to add more thinner, spin it round, and it will work. So I'm just going to add some of these. this keep adding thinner keep spinning you'll find it works great if you don't use thinner it won't be thin enough and you won't get a lovely thin lines that you need and again, as I said to you before, is that some people find it easier to pull down to do the branch, some people find it easier to go out. All you've got to remember is that it's thinner at the end, so when you start, you push, and then as you pull it out, you apply less pressure as you pull away. So the branches will become thinner automatically. There. Some here. So I think I'll do one on the other side. A clump of bits there. Okay. So always clean your know, your brushes after you've done that. Always clean the brushes. Um, what I think we'll do now is we will put some. I think we'll put some foliage over these branches that we've done now. So, should we use, I think we'll use a one inch brush. So we get the one inch brush and I'm going to get some liquid white. So I've got some liquid white. I'm going to dip in some liquid white. I'll put that on my palette. You could walk down here, and I'm going to go into some cadmium yellow, and I'm going to get some sap green. So cad yellow, sap green. So pull it down, and I'm going to tap. Pull it down one way, the other way. I have a little bit of yellow ochre in as well, just to add to the flavour. I'm going to tap. And this is really going to make these stand out. So, where we've done these branches, we're going to add the colour. So, I think here we we'll start at the top here, and all I'm doing, I'm just going to tap, and here, colour here. Bit dark over this side, I think I have it here. I'm not going to go too mad, but I do want some bits and pieces going on. Something here. I'm a bit darker at the back over here where it's more seeing in the shadow. So, what I'm doing is I'm just pulling down. Tap, 
pushing the ridge up there. And we'll have a few, a few bits and pieces down here. And a couple over there. And we'll have a few bits and pieces over here. I don't want too much, just an indication of bits and pieces that are going on. If you have too much, it, it distracts it and takes it away from the actual picture itself. So, lovely. So, I think now comes a time where we're going to add a little bit more interest to the picture. And so I think what we'll do is... We put a couple of people in there. So, using a filbert brush, let's get a little bit of red. So I think we're going to add some people in here, so I'm just going to get my filbert brush and I'm just going to put it down into some red. One side of the brush, other side of the brush. And all I'm doing is, is this is distance, you want these in the distance, so I only want it to do about that long. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it over here, I'm just going to touch and pull. And then at the tip of the brush, I'm just going to pull down sideways, that side, and probably a bit that way. So it's an indication of their arms. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm going to some yellow ochre. Same way. Load it up and I'm going to do this person next to them. Okay, I'm just touching one side like that, other side like that. So just an indication, it's just an indication. This one's a bit longer, I think I'll have this one a bit longer. Okay, I want my brush again. I'm going to get some white with the brush up white and I'm just going to pull across to a couple so like that and then for the other person I'm going to get some blue or some of that purple colour and I'm just going to pull down just the indication there. Like We're going to get liner brush again. Okay. Get a liner brush and I'm going to go into some black. So I'm going to go into my black with a liner brush. Now with this person here, I'm just going to do round head, and I've got some hair coming down the back. All right. And then the person next to, I'll do round head. Like so. This person hasn't got long hair. And here I'm just going to touch the hands so it looks like they're holding hands. Put a little dot there. I'm just going to put a little dot at the bottom. Indication that's their feet. And I might put a little hat on this one here. 
So I'll wipe my brush. I'll go into a little bit of wet. And I'm just gonna put a little hat or scarf on this one. Like that. A little highlight here and there. Something like that. So with that said, I think we have a finished picture. So it's Mark Tell with Paint with Mark. And I hope you've enjoyed this picture and I'll see you on the next one.